Well, hello, and thank you for joining us at A1K9 for what is part one of a three-part video sequence that we filmed here at A1K9 over the last few days, really designed to give an insight into what we do at A1K9, some of the dogs that we train. Um, you'll see a lot of the staff working different dogs. You'll see the staff's kids. Um, we've had uh, Cody and Cooper up here a fair bit over the summer holidays, so they've been uh, helping out with the dogs. So that's late and the nine-year-old that you'll be witnessing handling some of the dogs, both for obedience and in one of the later videos for protection work also. Family and personal protection dogs are certainly the mainstay of what we do here at A1K9. Um, however, we offer a myriad of different training solutions um, and various courses. We run some very well subscribed classes for those people who are local to us who wish to attend with their puppies and with their young dogs. Uh, we also offer residential obedience training for those who are located further away from ourselves. Um, we'll be showing you some examples of the residential obedience training, um, how the dogs um, manage to progress through the course. And uh, you'll actually see in one of the videos that's coming up um, how happy a dog that's been here on its residential course is to see its owners. Often I'm asked by people, will my dog forget me? when it's with you. Um, I think you'll see for yourself the short answer that is no, of course they don't. Concentrating on today's video, you'll see there are a number of the dogs out with their trainers and handlers. Um, you'll probably have noticed Cody, um, who is only nine years old, um, is handling one of the young Malinois females that we have here currently in training. Um, just panning across the screen, we've got Tams in here with a Malinois female. We've got Will there with one of our Doberman males, Blaze, big handsome male Doberman, um, trained for protection work. Um, here is little Cody with Jin. Um, Cody's nine, Jin's not even two yet. Um, I have to say very, very cute with her floppy ear. Um, I nearly didn't buy her because of that, but everybody thinks she's definitely got the cute factor. Then we've got Haley with uh, a working lion male German Shepherd called Aris. And on the end, we've got Adam with quite an unusual all black Malinois female, again, in training as a family protection dog, and her name is Moon. We try to do a lot of training in groups. Um, obviously, we train the dogs individually first, but uh, once they've got a, a good idea what they're doing, we try to get them out and work them as part of a team, uh, not because we're trying to get them ready for any obedience competitions or anything like that, but purely because it's more testing for the dog to work with the distractions of other dogs in close proximity to it than it is if you're working one-on-one -on -one in a field where basically the dog has got not a lot else to look at or be distracted by other than yourself. As I pointed out, this is in fact a training video, so uh, any little mistakes that either the dogs make or the handlers make are actually left in place because I absolutely detest seeing videos that are put up on YouTube which are absolutely picture perfect, um, that have had the life edited out of them um, because people want to show dogs that are absolutely faultless. Um, well, I have to say, in the real world, dogs are incapable of being faultless the same as uh, human beings are. Um, they make their little mistakes um, and part of the training process is correcting those mistakes and trying to get them to be the very best that they can be. 
while still allowing them to retain their character. As ultimately, these dogs are going to go and live as part of a family, in a family home, living a normal life, not looking to score points or anything else, but uh, just looking to be loving, obedient family pets. And in the case of the protection dogs, protectors too. But they have to remain true to themselves and they have to be dogs, albeit very, very well behaved, well balanced and well conditioned dogs. We're very fortunate here at A1K9 to have as much land as we have at our facilities. We've got just over 50 acres and that means that we can train the dogs um, in lots of different locations on our own property. But it also means that uh, the training does not become area specific, which is a danger certainly when you're training in the same place day in, day out. As the videos progress, you'll see that we don't just train entirely here on base. We go out um, into town and city environments and these dogs have to be well accustomed to dealing with day-to-day -day life. And that means meeting people, going to busy places and remembering their manners and their obedience and their training so as it all comes together irrespective of the environment. We typically spend a long time concentrating on the obedience part of the dog's training, uh, training it and honing it purely because as the dog goes through its future life, the likelihood of it having to utilize its protection skills, hopefully, is fairly remote. However, on a day-to-day -day basis, most of our clients are going to expect the dogs to walk nicely on the lead. They're going to expect them to come back when they're called to sit, when they're told to sit, to lay down, etc. And the old saying, practice makes perfect, is certainly true when it comes to working with dogs. That training process, again, is an ongoing thing because even when the dogs leave us, we suggest to clients that as part of their daily routine, if they've got time to spend five to 10 minutes of just doing some basic, normal run of the mill obedience with their dog, making sure that it's walking to heel when they tell it to walk to heel, that it sits when it's told to sit, that it lays down when it's told to lay down, all of the basic commands, because those commands and those obedience skills represent the control that a client is going to have over their dog. You can see here that to mix things up a little bit, um, the staff are doing a weave around one another. So instead of having poles in the ground or cones, which often you'll see in a class situation, um, we are effectively making movable poles and movable objects by getting one member of staff to keep their dog at a sit while the others weave around. And as they get to the end of the line, the one on the end carries on, as you can see in the video here. This is really, really great distraction for the dogs to try and get them to maintain concentration doing things like this. It is quite difficult, um, both in terms of the dog and dare I say it, the trainers and the handlers too. If you look on screen carefully, you'll see that uh, Second in from the left, there is a little lad there. That is Cooper, that's Adam's son. Um, Adam's worked with me for many, many years. His son is eight years old um, and doing a really, really good job of handling one of the Dutch imported Malinois females that we have. Um, she's working really, really nicely. Um, 
you'll also probably see in this clip um, what I alluded to earlier on, where you've got cakes going back to Indy there to put Indy back up into a stand stay because she was put in the stand and uh, she decided to go into a set. Not the end of the world as far as I'm concerned because um, ultimately she stayed where she was put. She just altered permission, altered position. But uh, Katie being a bit of a perfectionist decided to go and uh, correct her positioning. I'm often asked, how long should one aim for in a training session? And the short answer is it really depends as to the age of the dog. Um, dare I say it, the breed of the dog, because some dogs uh, take to training quicker than others. Um, and uh, really where the dog is up to in terms of how used to training it is. Um, you don't want to go out on day one and do a long training session because the dog will get bored. I think the secret to training is you train as long as the dog is having fun, as long as the dog is engaged, because once it switches off, you might as well stop the training session. Um, the other golden key that I live by is always end on a high, always end up on something that you know the dog is going to be the complete to a good standard, it's going to obey what you want it to do, and you always finish on a high. That is one of the keys of dog training. Practicing the downstays is always a good thing for the simple reason being that if you are out for a walk and uh, you want to stop and have a chat to somebody, it's very nice just to be able to put your dog in a down by the side of you. And uh, I think forget about it would probably be the wrong choice of words, but just in the knowledge that the dog is going to stay there until you're ready to move off. Once again, having concluded your conversation. As I said a little earlier on in the videos, we are training dogs here for people to keep as family pets. They're not being trained to go and win competitions, to do obedience shows or anything else, although some of them would probably do quite well if they were entered. Um, this has to be what I term good belt and braces obedience because that belt and braces obedience will show anybody at any time that your dog is under full and proper control. Consistent heel work is also something which is to be desired. Um, I hate nothing more personally than having a dog trying to drag me down the road, um, where it's trying to take me for a walk as opposed to me take it for a walk. Um, again, the more you practice your heel work, the better the dog will become and the more in tune you will become with the dog. At the end of the day, owning a dog is the formation really of a team. You and the dog, and if it's a family dog, it's a, a bigger team. This is the sort of control that we are aiming for. Here, for example, on the screen, you've got seven dogs, males and females, a mixture of breeds. We've got Malinois and German Shepherds there, all in the sit stay. Um, as I said, the youngest handler there, eight years old. Um, and the dogs are doing what is required of them. Um, they're staying put until their trainer, stroke handler, goes back to them and gives them the indication that they're ready to move off. I do hope that you've enjoyed part one of our short video. Please uh, keep an eye out for part two, which will be out in the next few days, where we'll be showing uh, the dogs doing more work with kids, etc., cetera, um, and a little bit more of an overview as to what we do here at A1K9. Once again, hope you enjoyed, and thank you very much for watching.